Shalom, shalom all. We, are, we turn to reading Jeremiah chapters 19 to 22, titled Pleasing God. Chapter 19, talking about a blow, broken flask, reading from verse 1. Thus saith Yahweh, go, to, this is called talking to Jeremiah, go and get another potter's earthen vessel and take of the ancients of the people and of the ancients of the priests and go forth unto the valley of the son of Hinnom which is by the entry of the east gate, and proclaim there the words that I shall tell thee. And say, Hear you the words of Yahweh, O kings of Judah, and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thus saith Yahweh, God of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring upon this place the which whosoever heareth his ears shall tingle. Because they have forsaken me, and then God goes on to add, how? And then in verse 6, therefore behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that. He goes on to say what he shall do. Continuing from verse 9, and I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters, and they shall eat every one the flesh of his friend in the siege and the straightness wherewith their enemies and they that seek their lives shall straighten them. Verse 13, And the houses of Jerusalem and the houses of the kings of Judah shall be defiled as a place of Tophet, because of all the houses upon whose roofs they have burnt incense unto all the hosts of heaven, and have poured out drink offerings unto other gods. My comment, if remembering Exodus in Egypt, the message of God was to Pharaoh, the king, and the inhabitants of the land. This was message via Moses and Aaron. Whoever believed and acted on it was saved. Those who did not, Israelites or other inhabitants, were not. I.e. the plague of hailstones, Exodus chapters, chapter 9 verse 20. He that feared the word of Yahweh among the servants of Pharaoh made his servants and his cattle to flee into the houses. And he that regarded not the word of Yahweh left his servants and his cattle in the field. And as we know, they suffered for it. So in other words, Israelite or not, it is about obedience, not your birth nation. The hosts of heaven are the planets which people worship in various ways and having days dedicated to them. The main two being the sun and the moon. But there are others, as we are told in the book of Acts. Read in verse 14, um, chap sorry, in chapter 14, verse 12, um, about Paul and Barnabas. And they, this is the pagan um, house of heaven worshippers, called Barnabas and Jupiter and Paul Mercurius, because he was the chief speaker. And then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands onto the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people. That's because they thought um, Paul, I say, was the god of Jupiter and um, Barnabas, the god of Mercury. Acts 19.35 And when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, Ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of Ephesians, of Ephesians is a worshipper of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Jupiter? Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. My subtle uh, change of wording to make a point. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahweh God had made. And he said unto the... People of today, worshipping on Sunday. That you are not worshipping the host of heaven, the sun God. It is the new Sabbath, because Jesus rose on the first day of the week, Sunday. But some wise obedient ones, this is what, what they replied, but some wise obedient ones, worshipping Yahweh God in spirit and in truth, as says in John chapters 4.23, and rightly defy the word of truth, as it says in 2 Timothy verses 2.15, replied, The first day of the week starts at sunset, the 7th, 
Now you know your Genesis, chapters 1, what we today call Saturday, i.e. the average time of about 6 p.m. according to whether it's summer or winter. Yeshua was already risen by the time Mary and others went to the tomb at a sunrise later on the first day of the week, the part we have called Sunday, starting from midnight Saturday. If it mattered to God in the past to punish those who did not keep the Sabbath days of Leviticus 23 holy, it still matters now. Anyway, there is neither any commandment to honour the day of Messiah's rising, but his death on Passover. So in other words, you have to know your scriptures and understand them properly to be able to rebut the devil's use of scripture as he did with Yeshua trying to tempt him in the wilderness. He can only tempt those who are deceivable, not those who are fully knowledgeable in the ways of God. Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 1. Jeremiah persecuted by Pasha. Now Pasha, the son of Immer, the priest, who was also chief governor in the house of Yahweh, heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. Then Pasha smote Jeremiah the prophet and put him in the stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin, which was the house of Yahweh. And it came to pass on the morrow that Pasha brought forth Jeremiah out of the stocks. Then said Jeremiah unto him, Yahweh have not called thy name Pasha, but Magomishabib. For thus saith Yahweh, Behold, I will make thee a terror to thyself, and to all of thy fields, and they shall fall by the sword of their enemies, and thy eyes shall behold it. And I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall carry them captive into Babylon, and shall slay them with the sword. Verse 14. Jeremiah speaking. Cursed be the day wherein I was born. Let not the day wherein my mother bear me be blessed. Cursed be the man who brought tidings to my father, saying, A man child is born unto thee, making him very glad. Verse 17. Because he slew me not from the womb, or that my mother might have been my grave, and the womb to be always great with me. Verse 18. Wherefore came I forth out of the womb to see labour and sorrow, that my days should be consumed with shame? My comment. Pastors and those in high church positions are not always right. Commonly wrong according to the Bible. Note how Jeremiah, like Job, is, always, is also cursing the day he was born and wishing he was never born due to the suffering. Their reward is the new heaven and earth, not necessarily earthly prosperity preachings as is common. Chapter 22. Jeremiah will fall to Nebuchadnezzar, so Jerusalem will fall to Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. Reading from verse 1. The word which came unto Jeremiah from Yahweh when King Zedekiah sent unto him Pasha, the son of Melchiah. And Zephaniah, the son of Mashiach, the priest, are saying, Inquire, I pray thee, of Yahweh for us. For Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, maketh war against us. If so be, that Yahweh will deal with us according to all his wondrous works, that he may go up from us. So now they turn into ox God. Verse 4. Thus saith God, Sorry, that's the safe Yahweh, God of Israel, says this God's reply. And I myself, verse 5, and I myself will fight against you with an outstretched hand and with a strong arm, even in anger and in fury and in great wrath. Verse 7. And afterwards, saith Yahweh, I will deliver Zedekiah, king of Judah, and his servants, and the people, and such as are left in this city from the pestilence, from the sword, and from the famine, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of their enemies, and into the hand of those that seek their life. And he shall smite them with the edge of the sword, he shall not spare them, neither have pity nor mercy. And we shall continue reading some of this in the book of Daniel, those who went to Babylon.
But notice God is saying he would not even have mercy. Because, as it says in Exodus chapter 20, verse 6, he shows mercy unto those who keep his commandments or love him and keep his commandments, to be precise. And we know we love God, as John says, when we keep his commandments. Now, a subtlety of the deceiving Satan is make people worship and do actions in the belief that they are worshipping Yahweh, God of their Bible. But he knows it is to him, as once it departs from what Yahweh, God, instructed, it is no longer holy and acceptable to him. All the above and former problems of the people came about by them forsaking the covenant. We find this covenant in Exodus chapter 24, verses 4 to 7, which included the holy days of Exodus chapter 20, verse 8, and 23, verse 14. Learn from their error and save your soul. It is obvious breaking the commandments are not pleasing to God. 1 John chapter 3, 22. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Psalms 103, verse 17. But the mercy of Yahweh is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children. Psalms 103, verse 18. To such as keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do, 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 not read or listen or hear them, but do them. Psalms 119, verse 98. Thou, through thy commandments, has made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. Psalm 111, verse 10. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom, and a good understanding have they that do, do, do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. And the last one, Proverbs 19.16, He that keepeth the commandment keepeth his soul, but he that despiseth his ways shall die. Shalom until tomorrow. Happy studies. Remember, read all of the chapters, especially tomorrow's one, chapters 23. Shalom.